So hi again, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Wachuma Sessions with myself, uh, your co-host, David Farrell, and my brother from another mother, Sergey Baranov. How are you doing, bro? Hey, good to see you. Good, good. It's been a while since we did the last show, and uh, for sure, a lot of things have happened uh, in the world. A lot of things have happened, I think, to both of us, too, and indeed many other people. But today... Uh, we were just talking about what we want to chat about. And I feel like a lot of what we want to share today is about awareness and discernment and waking up. Wake up, everybody. Uh, everything is about to hit the fan. Uh, we have very, very strong astrology going on right now. I know it's not your thing so much, uh, bro, but uh, we have the equinox coming up, which I know will be important for you down in Peru. Uh, I guess maybe you might be doing ceremonies. But at the equinox, we have this very powerful energy of fire and Aries and it can be a little combustible people can get a little excited about what they believe they can get a little excited about what they're talking about and maybe that's when people start butting heads so we're not here to do that today we're here to have an open discussion about a few things going on that have been catching our eye and also to offer some solutions we're both medicine brothers we love uh the Wachuma cactus it's a big part of uh, a big part of our lives right for both of us in different ways and we work with not just these medicines, but other medicines. And today we're going to be talking a little bit about another important medicine plant from the Americas, which is tobacco. And um, we're going to be introducing that later in the show. But where would you like to start today, bro? It has been a couple of months since we did a show. So maybe a little update from your side. What's been going on and what's been catching your attention? Uh, well, you know, certainly you're right. Uh, last time we talked, what was it, like a few months ago? I don't remember. It feels like the whole world changed already. <laughs> Again, right. you know? And, uh, you know, life is good here. We've been busy. You know, we had this protest in Peru like, for like, two months. Heavy duty. We went on a lockdown kind of again. But that was, this time was done by the people. So, you know, political stuff, protests. But we didn't skip any ceremonies. So we were doing the same schedule. And people were flying in, flying out. It was like, like in a movie, we, we take people two in the morning out and bring them in. You know, in it's just like a little crazy. But still, we kept going, you know, regardless. It's like, you know, we kind of live, and, and that that's very much uh, in the essence of this discussion, I think, because it was interesting. It's like we live in this, you know, we're surrounded by protests. Like our street right here was blocked. You can't drive, everything blocked. You only can walk. It's like literally where we are. And, and yet, you know, and everybody's crazy and depressed and scared and things so like, you know, you see the news when you get scared, you know, like people saw, people were telling me, oh, you know, what's happening in Peru? Are you okay there? Oh my God, I mean, Peru is on fire, you know, uh, we, we delayed our booking, we're coming late in the summer. And I'm like, man, we didn't skip one ceremony, we didn't find it. I mean, the problem is that somewhere there, yeah, I hear about it. But we are fine. It's like life is normal here somehow. It's like you live in this bubble, you know, this this protest and this uh, you know fear. It's like the same with COVID when we had COVID. Same thing. It's like it was crazy war, and yet we live our life, you know. So it was the same thing. It's like we continued living normal, normal life. Of course, we delayed our vacation. Yeah, we couldn't fly. Yeah, you know, I couldn't drive to Cusco. Yeah, but we still we play with kids. We did medicine. Everything fine, you know? So it's just living in the world, kind of living your own reality. You know, there is a greater reality for sure, and there is your reality. And that's important to, to kind of distinguish, you know? And you can live your reality. Of course, we are interconnected, but to a certain degree, you can maintain your, certainly you can maintain your sanity 100%. Absolutely. That's like, I guarantee you that, you know, and you also can maintain your lifestyle to a certain extent, even living in the matrix, even living in, a, in a, you know, in a crazy time, you still can maintain your lifestyle. So it, it's really like coming, the question would be like, how do you do that? What does it take to do that? You know, so maybe we can, you know, talk about this and how, and helping people, first of all, encouraging people, first of all, giving that hope, and that's a true hope that it's possible to maintain sanity and well-being and peace and and your lifestyle in a crazy world because the world is crazy and it's going to be even more crazy. That's what I see in the horizon, you know? And so far, I've been right with my doom predictions. <laughs> you know? It's not like I don't want to be right. I want to be wrong. I want to be wrong about everything I say. 
I want to be wrong about everything I say in, in my last book. I want to be this book, the 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 wrongest book, the worst book ever written in the world history. I want to be criticized. I want to be ridiculed. I want to be laughed at. I want to be called crazy. I want to be called like whatever you want to call me for this book. But you know what? The, the bad news, it's not going to happen. It's not no. going to happen. Everything I, mean, I can call you crazy if you want me to, bro, just so that you, you can tick that off on your bucket list. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you're right, bro. I mean, it's like, uh, you know, we'll talk a bit more about your book again uh, later in the show, but it, we are living in a crazy world. It is going crazy. And, you know, I guess the trick is whether we go crazy with it, whether we lose our sanity or whether we start to bring it back. And, you know, one of the plants that we've been working with at Quantum Plant Healing is nettle. And nettle is a very, very strong plant for boundaries. And what we're all learning in the process of this plant diet is about how we need to hold our boundaries so that we don't get pulled into other people's craziness, whether it's on the hallucination box uh, you know, doling out the six o'clock news and all of the deceit and illusion that comes with that, or whether it's other people who've been deluded by those narratives and somehow are still pushing them onto us. You know, this is a time where we want to be sovereign so that we don't become crazy with the rest of the craziness, right? Yeah, because there will be no hope. If we go crazy with those guys, then who, who is going to lead the world? I mean, who, who is going to make it through? Who is going right. to, you know, to do things, you know, to build the future? Right, right. So let's just talk about uh, crazy in the sense of what's been going on in Peru, because I know there's been protests down there. It's been a little volatile. What can you tell us the sort of uh, of the overnotes? Is there big change happening in Peru, Sergi, or is this people reacting, or what's the real situation on the ground? What's causing all of this? Well, you know, it, it was. I'm I'm not really sure, like to the very depth of it, but it looks to me like it was. It, it's kind of was organic in a sense. And then I feel like it was fueled to the some degree by some kind of, by some kind of uh, radical social socialist groups, and um, you know that and people or something. Uh, no, we we have different. It's like it's a, it's like a it's a South American socialism, you know. It's like kind of uh, it's that uh, socialist communist movement that kind of appear here and there and it's uh, it's pretty violent it can be violent it was here like 20 years ago it was an era of terrorism pretty bad we don't have it now but the same idea coming from the same you, you see i recognize it because i'm from ukraine i'm from soviet union i understand more about this than people who live here this is but i, I just know more history about this so it seems to me like it's a it it's got a mixture of real uh, feelings, you know, real protests fueled by certain political um, agendas. Agendas, yes. And, but uh, luckily, you know, it kind of died out. It's like it, it worked for two months and people just realized finally that they hurt themselves by not working, by not doing business. So it's like, okay, nothing is changing. The politics remain the same. So we just go back to, to do our thing, you know? So it's, it's it's all quiet now. It's all good. All relaxed. The, the, the protests are over with. But it was, it's, you know, the, the president went, they put the guy in jail, and then they kind of protested because of that. And it's just like, uh, you know, it's just the local politics here, you know. But yeah. nothing really, you know, nothing really changed. And it's all the same. And it's so not a protest. It's an interesting really point, bro. You know, you were saying that you carried on doing your ceremonies and carried on doing everything. And I think that if I think about the last two to three years too, no, I didn't really actually ever get too badly affected, particularly back in Britain when we had a lockdown. I, I was out in the woods, I was out with the plants. It didn't really happen for me. And this made me wonder a lot about these realities. And this is one of the questions that we're putting out to the audience today is which reality do you choose? Do you choose the one where you are subservient, submissive, you do all the things that you're told, even though they don't make sense and nobody actually gave you a choice in those things? Or do you carry on doing what you're doing, running your ceremonies, going for your nature walks and living life and communicating with people, I guess, through the internet, you know? So which reality do you choose? I think that's probably the, the major theme for today. So. Yeah, what do you think about that, bro? How, how how some people got very affected by all of the last two to three years and some of us just carried on the same and have been barely affected? Are we living in the same reality or a different one? Well, I think j just to just to answer that, I think it's important to understand that the, 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 the question of choice goes deeper than that. Mm, of yeah, course. It's, not, it's not really 
how you choose to live. It's like, what do you choose to be? Mm -hmm. uh, it's like, are you, is your choice to be afraid? Are you choose to be afraid, period, period. Are you choose to be afraid, period. Are you choose to be submissive, period. Are you choose to be compliant, period. Are you choose to be obedient, period. Are you choose to be com uh, um, conforming, period. You know, it's like the choices are there. It's deeper than just what they do outside and how they continue working. It's like, it's like oh, 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 I have my own vision of the world, my own critical thinking, my own logic, my own understanding, my own rationale, and I make my own decisions about what happened. And based on that, I live my life, you know? So, yes, we were affected uh, because Peru was closed 10 months. So we are fully operating, you know, by tourists. You know, there, there are no planes coming. We don't have food, you know? It's like we are fully, uh, we are fully dedicated to the center, you know? So we were affected financially for sure, but that was a great lesson too. That moved me to a direction that I wasn't really in before, which is preparedness. I never saw myself as a prepper of any kind. You know? it's like, yeah. I'm like, you know, kind of living on a, on a daily basis here. But these things it's like, oh, okay, no, they, they got a point of that. You have to be prepared for anything. And not only that, it's like you have, you must as a, as a family, leader i'm a father you know i must this is my responsibility to look farther and to be sure that i protect my family from whatever for, for from what you see and what you don't see you know so you have to kind of look ahead if you're a responsible father if you're a small parent you have to look ahead and predict things you know and prepare so we move in that direction and kind of uh, we're growing our own food here now. We're kind of starting that. It's like I walk the talk, you know. I don't just say things to say. If I say something, I do things, you know. So in my last book, I speak about self uh, sustainability. Well, we started the, pro the, the project last year. We grow our corn right there. We have our little garden there. We have our, you know, we have, we are moving in that direction. I believe in self sustainability 100%. Just the same as I believe in self governing, period. You have to be a self-governing person. Mm -hmm. Which self-sustainability is a part of that, but you have to be self-governed in your psychology. You know, you decide what to believe in. You decide what what information sinks in and what you just dismiss. You know that that's all like tied into, into self-governance and self-sustainability. Uh, you know. I mean, what we're talking about here, bro, is sovereignty, really, and the ability yeah. to be a self-sufficient system. You know, and one of the interesting things that we've been remembering or rediscovering through the plant emotions we've been doing is the sense that we are an, a toroidal field. Each and every one of us is, is an activated toroidal field, which, if we understand what that is, it's a self-replenishing, self-regenerating system that doesn't actually need anything else from anybody. Okay, we need to put food and stuff in ourselves, but that's also part of our sovereignty. And as we expand and evolve, I guess, in this process, whatever we want to call it, we are becoming aware of the codependency that we have on many, many things, right? Including our codependency to the supermarkets and things like this. Now, if we take that power back into our own hands and say, I don't need the supermarket, I don't need the government, I don't need any of these people because I can actually live by myself because I'm a self-governing sustainable sovereign person right and that feeling is something that probably very few humans actually know because we've been programmed to be slaves right yeah absolutely especially living in the matrix the world, yeah which is the, you know cities basically big cities that were were more like uh, visible you know and sensible it's like you know you're a slave to the system in many ways i mean where, where do you keep your money are you keeping it in the bank well this you're a slave to the banks. They can take your money, they can freeze your money, they can find you, they can do whatever they want. Just look what happened in Canada. You 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 support truckers? Okay, we'll freeze your bank account. <laughs> your freedom is over right there, you know? It's like you don't have money, you don't have food, you don't have anything. So getting out of the banking system is important. Finding the way of uh, that's why crypto is uh, come to play, you know, crypto. People don't really understand that. And uh, it's not, you know, what people think, most of the people who are new to it, what people think about crypto is speculation. It's 
game. Of course, it's part of it, yes. But it's not the only thing. Crypto is freedom. That's what it is, period. If you have gained, great. Well, better for you. But it's a freedom. It's something that cannot be taken from you. You can, you, you can just give a finger to the whole system and live your life. Because nobody will freeze your money. You can still go buy food. You can still try. You can do whatever you want because you are you have your own fund. Crypto? You have crypto? You will make through this. You don't have it? Well, you know you know what, what they have, what they plan. You know, digital ID, everything will be connected to this. You know, your social credit, social credit score, you, 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 you criticize government, boom. You know, they, they block your account. I mean, yeah, we, we're moving there. It's yeah. coming. It's already coming. It's like this year, next year. By 2025, it will be like fully blown. You know, you will not be able to say anything on Twitter or Facebook without having repercussions. In that, you know what I mean? So if you have crypto, you have your banking, you become your own bank. Then you are free from it. You can say whatever you want. Well, they can censor you. Who cares? But I still go by food. I still do my thing. You know what I mean? So that's important. Financial freedom, food freedom. And I don't know if that's probably the most important from all this. It's your spiritual freedom. Right. It's, it's your psychology. Are you free from the bullshit? <laughs> you know, that's the question. You know, and and when you build it all together like a pyramid, then you go on the top of your own pyramid. You know, so you you you're kind of on the top, and it's like you you everything is under control. You can live in the world of tyranny. You can survive because you are not dependent on the system. It's very important. Very you know, important, right? Very important. You know, let's just talk about crypto for a second, bro, because, you yeah. know, I think it is important, right? And, you know, we're, we're going to bring in a few other things to do with predictive programming and a few other things in a little yeah. while. But let's talk about crypto because, you know, I wasn't super into crypto a while ago, but in the last year or so, I've become more interested in it. And not just crypto, but also other um, metals like silver, particularly, which yeah. we know is, is a seriously devalued resource. And, you know, what I'm understanding about crypto and even things like non-fungible tokens and NFTs, they're not anything that me personally being a plant person, I would ever have thought I'd be interested in. But what you're saying is correct, because we have also the alternative to crypto, which is the central banking digital currencies, yeah. which is kind of like crypto, but not crypto. It's the crypto that we give you, but we're still in control of you. Whereas crypto in its original form has many problems. It, it is, a, you know, I talked to the Ascended Master Zach about crypto some time ago. He's a 26 dimensional being. And he said the major problem of crypto that's going to come up in the next couple of years is collective trust. He said there's going to be many coins that people will start to feel like they want to trust. And then something is going to erode that trust and then the coin will devalue instantly. And he said, you're probably going to see a series of coins come and go uh, over a period of time until there is a collective trust in a certain handful of coins that everybody believes are OK. But what I like also is the potentiality in Michael Tellinger. I'm sure you've heard of him down in South Africa with his Ubuntu movement. He's creating his own crypto token that is based on community and what the community actually is able to produce with their own hands. And I like this idea. This to me has started to get me thinking about how our own community of quantum plant people can produce a crypto coin that is based on medicines and maybe how we trade medicines and things like this. So. I think it's super exciting because you're right, this is giving us the opportunity, bro, to think about freedom and how do we organize ourselves with our communities, with maybe our own currencies, and then how do we trade those currencies or our collaterals, whatever they might be, plants, food, medicine, you know, uh, infinite, uh, you know, in, in theory, um, products, rather than taking um, products out of the ground, which maybe have a shelf life or aren't infinite. And how do we work with each other and communities in this way? That's where we can get freedom from the system by creating our own system. It doesn't have to be a top-down hierarchy where the guy at the top says, and you have to do. This is a community ground up very much uh, to do with the age of Taurus, you know, and uh, many of the astrological movements are showing us right now that we should be coming to a more, how to say, horizontal structure, not one that's like with the pyramid. We can be our own pyramid, but if we want to be in a group or a community or a society, I suggest that maybe there's going to be a new way of interacting. So what do you think about all of those things? Like, uh, yeah. you know, I think this is the future. This is the future that the powers that shouldn't be trying to take from us. This is exactly why they're coming up. You know, the, the war of crypto is starting now. It's happening now. It's not, you know, it's perfectly timed. You know, it's not, um, 
it's not a spontaneous event. We just, we just decide. It's all planned. It's all part of the theory agenda. It's all planned of total control, digitalization of currency. You know, they are coming with uh, central bank digital currency, which is if if people allow this, it's is the end of you. It's the is the hell on earth. It's the dystopian that makes George Orwell looks like a school teacher or something. You know, it's like it's like, imagine you, all your earnings are completely controlled, all your spending control and trade and trust, and all this will be connected to climate, you know, carbon footprint. So you ate too much meat this month, okay, no more meat for you for until August, you know? It's like, oh, you travel too much, okay, no more uh, traveling for you. It's total control, it's programmable money. They will decide what you can spend on. Imagine that, like, it's like, this, this is like unbelievable. But that's the plan. So not only that, they might also restrict how much of this you can have, which means you you know now we're living in the world like okay, work hard, make more money, you know, have your savings, you know, buy some things, do what you want. Imagine you have a certain amount of money that is allowable by the government to have, and you cannot make more, and your allowance will be expired. Like you say, like ninety days, you have to spend, uh, you know, your money. If not, it just expires. Expired money. This is like a serious concept. I don't know if people even think about this. This is like, can you imagine this? Like you have your savings and you just you don't just sit on it. You must spend it. If not, you cannot get more spending, more money. Well, don't you think though that this makes makes well certainly, and I'm sure you'd agree with this, but it, it makes me question like how real was the money in the first place? And let's be honest, if it's not something tangible, I mean, we could be trading sunglasses, right? We could be we could be trading notebooks. That could be whatever. But in actual fact, what we've been trading is numbers on a screen. And did the money ever really exist, or did somebody just type it onto a screen? And I think the more that we think about this, the more that we see that we've been living in a in a world that is not real. It's all kind of made up. And, and, you know, anyone who's ever researched like the straw man ideas or what happens with our birth certificate or the fact that we have a certain amount of um, right to a certain amount of finance and abundance, which the banks and the government take when we uh, our parents sign the birth certificate. And so in actual fact, when we're being loaned money by the bank, and this there's a very, very interesting uh, video footage coming out of some um, court cases in the US recently highlighting this point. When the banks lend us money, they're actually just giving us our own money that we actually have a right to in the first place. And then they're charging us interest on top. So they're making more pretend money out of money that was never theirs in the first place and then putting that back on us. Man, right? The banking system is the biggest scam on earth. <laughs> well, I don't know. There's quite a few big scams, but the banks definitely no, want them. The banking system is it's like, this is like when you look into it, it's like, oh my God, this is like all fraud. Like all mm -hmm. your printing. You know, money out of thin air, and then lending you out of for interest, and you, you don't pay. They take your house, they take real assets for it. And the worst thing, do you know that they can? I mean, what kind of scam is this? That if I have ten dollars, I can only lend you ten dollars. I cannot lend you a hundred dollars. I don't have a hundred. I have ten. They can. They can lend you. It's a fractional reserve. They have what? to have ten dollars in the bank to give you a hundred. Imagine that. So it's like this is like ten times you make ten times of money you don't have, and then you don't pay it. They take real assets. I mean, you look at this like, are you kidding me? Really, it's crazy, right? It is crazy. It, it's like a, a fraud of the century, right there. <laughs> it's like right. wow. I, I I was completely ignorant of all this. Completely. I, I this is just years of kind of looking into understanding, researching. And they're like, it's like what? It's like, what, what kind of world are we living in? Everything you know is a fraud, basically, you know? Like, everything is manipulated, lied, you know, your education system, your banking system, your medical system, everything is corrupt, everything is manipulated. Everything, you can't trust anyone, you can't trust your doctor. We, we have seen that very clearly in the last three years. We, we have seen that very well. I mean, the, the, the trust in doctors, I mean, that's like, I mean, if you still have this, you know, I mean, it's like, you know, it's all you, you know? You know, for people like me and you, Sergey, the, the cactus is the doctor, right? Or our plants. Oh, for, for sure. My my medicine, it, it's actual medicine. My doctor is nature. My doctor right. is the actual nature and its children, which are cactus, vines, you know, other plants. This is the doctor I trust. 
If I they have, have no agenda, they are there, they pass the test of time, millions of years of evolution, thousands of years of usage. So the safety, safe and effective, that's where you apply it. Right. That is safe and effective. Mm -hmm. Not the other thing, not the offered medicine, you know, offered exactly. medication. You know? yes, that medication. is safe and effective. And you can see effects on you and on other people. You see how you feel, how you make other people feel, you know. It's like so it's like the whole system was exposed in the last three years. I mean, the politics, the, the medical society, the, the, and like everything. It's like guys, I mean, there is nobody to trust. I mean, you it's on you, you know, it's not like you can call us name, but you have shown, you have proven that you are all bunch of scumbag. That's it. You are not deserved to be trusted. We yeah. take life in our hands and live the way we think we should live. And that's including what I put in my body, what I put in my mind, you know. It's you know, you can you can you can see the last three years like this. Yeah, of course, it's absolute hell what they created for us and hurt a lot of people. But at the same time, this acceleration that they did actually backfired in the sense that it, it just brought awakening to so many people that people otherwise would be just asleep. And yeah. believing in your doctor, believing in your bank, believing in your president, you know, believing in your TV, in your media clowns there, you know. But, you know, it's like today, it's like, are you kidding me? I mean, unless you are a completely brainwashed. Uh, then well, we're going to get... <laughs> Yeah, we're we're going to get into that. those people in the minute, bro. We're going to be yeah, talking yeah. about the NPCs, the non-playing characters. Yeah, but I just, yeah. want to, I just want to um, just touch on a couple of things you said there because I think you're absolutely correct. Trust. Who do you trust? Well, in the end, the person I trust the most is me uh, because I can trust my choices. And if I make a choice that somehow impacts me negatively, well, I can hold up my hands and say that was my choice. I got maybe got that one a little bit wrong. Not that I think there is anything really ever wrong, but maybe that wasn't the best choice. And, and also, you know, we we have these people that we perceive in you know society leaders politicians even monarchs whatever etc that we perceive that we should have a level of trust in but these people have all failed us across the board whether it's the the medical profession whether it's the media whether it's the political system whether it's the banking system they have all failed us in their lack of transparency and in their level of corruption and collusion but as you said and i think this is the most important thing hashtag forced evolution the light is always working through the dark because in these situations you, you nailed it because of all of the dastardly actions of the last two to three years it's forced a certain section of society anyway to go oh my god you scumbags right look what you're doing to us am i going to keep accepting this bs from you am i going to keep accepting that because you give me a bank account i have to bend over and take it or, or how you know what's going on here for me and i think that we are being given the opportunity now as that old paradigm comes to an end and it's collapsing for sure it's imploding for those of us that actually can be bothered to look at it we can see that it's a rotten carcass that is imploding on itself however we have the choice as people to either go in with that imploding carcass and go down with the sinking ship we'll say you know what you can keep that stinking shit heap over there and we're going to come over here and we're going to do something different in community we're going to create our own currencies and all of these things right and so you know one of the things i think that is really important is is trust and how do we get trust back well we have to start trusting ourselves and the choices that we make and maybe if we're growing our own food we're taking our own medicines we can be reasonably secure that if these things are coming out of the ground the, the being that we're trusting the most is mother earth and me personally i have a lot more trust in mother earth than any of these people i see on the television right bro yeah, absolutely. 100 100%. 100%. That's that's what kept us sane during the last three years. <laughs> right. People went absolutely nuts worldwide. I mean, crazy. Yeah. Like completely. We just kept our sanity. We we're fine. We were financially hurt. That's it. We were not psychologically hurt at, at no point. You know, we are just we just got stronger. Actually, <laughs> you know, I just got strong. I feel like so much strong today as I was three years ago, you know. Uh, and financial, well, we fix that too, you know. So and uh, it, and now if that happens again, if they shut everything down, we're going to be fine because I learned my lesson. So right. I don't really care in that sense what they're going to plan. I will, I, me and my family, we're going to make progress. You right. know, we are conscious, aware, loving, bonded family with plenty of medicine 
and, and all we need to leave here mountains around here nature what else you, well, you have your home you have your family you have a beautiful view you have wonderful medicines it's exactly. the same here, you know, in this space, we, we have this wonderful building that came to us. We have these gardens, we have lots of plants and trees. So we can shut the doors for two to three Absolutely. weeks. And we did the preparation. We got, we have a nice pantry where we put all of the, the dried foods. We have lots of stuff. So if, if the worst comes to the worst, we are prepared for uh, probably a couple of months to look after ourselves and not only look after ourselves, enjoy life in the garden with the plants and mother nature. But, you know, this is a kind of a cool segue into being prepared. And, you know, uh, we've been talking a little bit about prepping and some of us have been on the prepping page for a while. Maybe some of you haven't. But the reason I'm talking about prepping, because it's like it's not necessarily that we even have to try and guess what's going to happen next, because as we were talking about before we jumped on, and this is kind of my lead into this is about predictive programming because we can see anyone who's listening to me and Sergey right now and going, what the hell are you guys talking about? You're making it sound like this was all some sort of planned agenda that was rolled out. Well, if you go back five years, 10 years, 20 years, and you watch The Simpsons, for example, you will see that there's a lot of stuff in there. They're like, how on earth did they know that? Because it's what's come true. How did Sergey know some of the stuff that was going to come true? How did I know some of the stuff that was going to come true? How did some of us know many things? And yet, up to 80% of the population seemingly didn't know. What's what's the difference there, bro? What do you think is the difference? How did some of us know what was going to happen and some not? And, and how is that playing out right now in, in how we're seeing the disclosures being received? Because there is so much disclosure, right? And yet it's, it's like just the wind whistling between the trees for some people. It's like it doesn't seem to be being received. You know, our former health minister during the... Um, the period of 2020, he's now been exposed through his WhatsApp messages as telling people, when are we going to deploy the variant? Uh, excuse me? What did you just say in that message? Yeah. Uh, uh -huh. Surely that variant is a natural byproduct of your story about this thing that's on the loose. But if you're deploying it, that sounds like you have yeah. control of it. Of course. <laughs> this is terrorists, man. These guys are criminal terrorists. That's what people don't understand. People right. need to wake the fuck up. The world Basically. is run by criminal terrorists who are not Osama bin Laden. That's what you want you to think. That's the whole part of this bullshit propaganda, Osama bin Laden. The real terrorists are running the government, are running the all this, you know, offered offered medication program and everything. These are the terrorists who terrorize us into accepting the poison into shutting down, into, into fearing, into everything, into the whole nightmare that we were went through. It was designed by terrorists, bioterrorists and psychological terrorists. These people need to be all in prison. Right. All of them. These are people who are in the government, running the government with the suit, with the microphone, with the, with the media people. People don't understand where to look for terrorists because they think that the terrorists are in Afghanistan. That's Apparently, what, right? <laughs> you know, that's oh, the terrorists are right there. That's how they look. The, I speak about this in one of my earlier books, but I speak about religion there. The Satan, the image of Satan, and how things like it's the same thing, but it's it's in the religious side. It's like I think it's in the second book, the message of confession, breaking through the walls of delusion. But that's the thing, is that when people wake up and understand that all this run by evil clowns. War will change, but people cannot, for some reason, this trust in authority is so strong in people. Like we have been brainwashed to believe in authority from early age. You know, your school teacher, and then your director, and then and then your boss, and then your your politician, then your governor. You know, so it, it's hard for you to see the truth behind the form, the appearance. That's in in this book too. I speak about it. When you see that it's always creepy evil terrorists that need to be in prison who are making policies that becomes a mandate in your life it's just like it's like what it's like this is like a movie they leave do you remember is a movie they leave very good movie totally recommend the people to see it's called they leave with with the i forgot this guy it's like you have to watch this it's like it shows you there it's like the guy just found the glasses on the street, a box of glasses, and he's like, okay, it's just, you know, means nothing. And then he just put it, just sunglasses. And he walk on the street and he starts seeing hidden messages everywhere. And he's like, what? what? What is that? You know, you put the glasses and you see the actual programming in society. So it's an interesting movie. It's a very good, uh, it shows you how things work, you know? 
So, man, I forgot. I'm sorry, I forgot. What was the uh, question? Sorry, we were just talking. First of all, I just want to clarify: the movie was called "They Live," right? So, yeah, I'm they, to check that yeah. Out oh, Bullock, thirty years old. I think it was what was it? Russell Crowe. I don't remember. But it's just it's on YouTube. It's free on YouTube. Anyway. Yeah, so yeah, we yeah. were talking about predictive programming and, yeah, predictive and the programming. And the symptoms, yeah. right? This is a phrase that I coined. The Sims okay. and the Simpsons. We're living in like a computer game with the Sims, but somehow the Simpsons are programming all of this so that we know what's coming and how the game is played. And now that we can see that we or that we have been in the game and we're stepping out of the game, maybe because we've got the special glasses on now, we're like, oh my gosh. I thought this, you know, the classic line I hear from my fellow countrymen is like, well, well, why would the government do these bad things to us? Because they're here to help us. They're on our side. It's like, oh, wake up, everybody. The government hasn't been on your side since when? No. There was an amazing uh, talk that I saw that Margaret Thatcher gave uh, back in the 80s that basically she was trying to tell the people there is no money. Government has no money. There's just your money. And we're going to take your money and we're going to spend it in the way that we see fit. And that's it. Don't expect us to deliver any money. We're going to take yours and we're going to use it in the way that we see fit. And she's there in the Houses of Parliament saying it. And of course, Mrs. Thatcher had a very, very profound effect on, on Britain during the 80s. And I would say that probably has laid the groundwork for much of what has happened since. She definitely took a lot of the spirit of the British people away and actually weakened them and, and took away their ability to stand up for themselves, which has been actually going on across all of Europe over the last 30, 40 years. But when we're talking about predictive programming or programming of illusions. Now, of course, I know that you're originally from the UK and you, uh, you know, are uh, also part of the Soviet Union back when you were a child. We can see the story that is being played out on the television about your homeland is ridiculous. And yet still a large percentage of the people are playing the Sims game and believing all of what's going on. And at what point do people start to wake up, brother, and say, hold on a second, what the hell is actually going on in there? Why do I keep believing people that I know are not trustworthy, that I know tell me lies, but I keep believing them about these things? And at what point does that illusion break down? Because I feel that's a huge stumbling block in Europe right now is looking at the reality of what is going on in that part of Europe and saying, hold on a second, maybe we're being told a pack of lies about everyone involved here, who are the good guys and who are the bad guys, if there are indeed any good guys in any of this. But what do you think, bro? It's your homeland, and I'm sure you've got a, an opinion about this. Yeah, well, it's a whole different conversation. You know, yes, I'm, I'm from Ukraine, you know. Um, so but I also understand the bigger plan. I understand the bigger picture. I, I understand what people don't understand about it. You know, it's this is not it's nothing to do with what you are told to do. It this 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 is a long plan. It, this is like who knows? Maybe from Second World War, maybe like eighty years thing. They right. wanted to take Russia. They want the resource of Russia, and they want to have a uh, you know unipolar world that's it how it's like you know it's like this is like you, you become a king if you take russia but it's not happening it's not possible russia is a nuclear power and russia has spirit these people fought germans with 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 like th these people fought german tanks with uh uh you know what, what you call this rifles man this is like old rifle this is ridiculous man it's like it, they don't understand who they did it with. It's like teasing a nuclear bear. It's a very bad idea. You know, it's like people are suffering. Sure, the Ukrainian people are suffering. This is bad. The whole thing is evil, man, you know? But the forces behind that, it's bigger than local players. This is NATO and this is... Um, UN. You know, yeah, UN. This is like, this is global power that one control and one resources. And Russia has plenty, oil and gas. You get those guys, you're the king of the world. And also, you know, it's more complex because you also have the China there too, you know. So it's like China, Russia, and America. And, and America is losing their dominance, you know. And that's, that's about saving the dollar. It's about petrodollar. It's about, this is geopolitics. The people don't understand geopolitics. People think, oh, Putin is bad. He's a tyrant, you know, and I'm not defending Putin by any means, man. No. I mean, the guy's a KGB, you know what I mean? We're not, this is not, but you have to be fair. You have to be fair. And to be fair, you have to call this bullshit out because it's all a lie. It's the same thing they told you that they went to Iraq because they had 
a weapon of mass destruction. Remember George Bush said that? Where is the weapon? Did you find any? No? Oh, but, but the work still happened. Uh, 500,000 children died. All based on life. There are many reasons for people to invade Iraq. First of all, there was a lot of ancient history there. I mean, anyone who's ever done any rabbit holing will understand that one of the things they were looking for was the grave of Gilgamesh. Now, Gilgamesh was a demigod. Now, one would have won why, why was the American military looking to excavate the grave of Gilgamesh? Well, that's a big question. And also, how much oil was stolen out of Iraq? How much oil has been stolen out of Syria? All of these questions. And still, there's, 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 a, there's a war going on in Syria, which is basically being backed by the West in order to steal, uh, I, I can't remember the exact figure, but it was something like 80% of Syria's oil production. 80% of their GDP has been taken out of their hands and nobody's doing anything about it. This is so fraud. There was no real war since Second World War. No right. real. I mean, the wars are real. The battlefield is real. The bullets are real. But the cost is false. All of it. All of it is a scam, complete scam. Afghanistan, scam. Iraq, scam. Russia, absolute scam. It's all scam. And it's like, when you understand like who's running, I mean, A.C. Howard told you that like, what, what, what like eight years ago or seven, I don't know. He told you guys, military, watch military industrial complex, you know, watch those guys. So you have those guys, you have banking cartel that finance all that. You have pharmaceuticals, but you just see the culprit in the field. You see who running the show. It's like, and how you can fight them? Well, you can't fight them directly because they are powerful institutions. But there is a way to fight. It's by not participating. Right. You exactly. not participate. I'm not participating in the war. I'm not participating in, in the propaganda. I'm not participating in your big pharma life. I'm not participating in your banking thing. I'm not participating in your media stuff. I'm not participating. I'm right. observing. I'm seeing through the lies, but I'm not participating. I'm building my own reality within myself. You know, that's how we fight that. You just not participate and you don't comply. And they and it's all collapse. It just will all collapse on its on itself or under its own weight. Because right. they build a lot of structures. It's like a big government. Big. It's like they will collapse. You stop supporting the narrative, it collapses. So it's like it's like we have the power. This is the power of the people. The people don't understand. You don't need big guns. You don't need to. It's not like you go fight the guns. Oh, it's crazy, man. They, they, they got nukes, man. They got the military. You can fight military. You don't need anything. You just say no. Right. You say no. No guns, man. Like this. No. I don't buy your bullshit. Period. Right. And I have ways to live. To survive through what you are going to impose on us until you collapse and it will hopefully put you in jail. That's so, you know, this, I guess this is what we're talking about here. We're, we're just painting a sort of a more general picture of what's been going on and look, looking beyond the veil, I guess we can say, and seeing how we've been fed ideas about terrorism, how we've been terrorized ourselves in different ways, psychologically, medically, financially, lots and lots of different types of terrorism, right? That have been uh, waged against us but what we're trying to do here i feel sergey is really show people it's like okay at what point do you say enough is enough right enough of your bs enough of all of this stuff you don't have the right to tell me what to do i am a sovereign being however where they manage to catch all of us is through the services they provide well we don't have the right to tell you what to do but if you want to engage with our services then we do have the right because we're the ones setting the rules and so we've all somewhat i guess um, unconsciously acquiesce to this because it's like, well, it's convenient to have a bank, it's convenient to have the internet, it's convenient to have all of these things, which is a whole part of the, the Sims, right? The Matrix. It's like, we're going to make it so easy for you that for you to leave that system is going to be so goddamn difficult that you won't want to do it. But now the systems are breaking down, the infrastructure is breaking down. If you try to get through to anybody uh, on a telephone in, in a government department, even in HMRC or any of these organizations, oh my gosh, you're going to deal with bot after bot after bot. You're not, you don't get to speak to humans anymore. You speak to robots and you could be on the phone for an hour and not get anywhere. And I'm like, well, what kind of service is this now? Like, I mean, I've always had a good relationship with my bank. I've always worked energetically with my bank and other organizations to make sure that the, the interactions were smooth, but it doesn't necessarily mean I want to stay in the old banking system. So I guess what we're talking about here is when do we say enough is enough? And when do I exit? When do I regain my sovereignty? But how do I do that 
in a way that doesn't leave me like in, in a bad position without food, without water, etc. And I think that what we've got here, Sergi, is, is an entry point. In this moment now, with all of this collapse, with the illusion really there for everybody to see, the question is like, well, well why are some people not doing that? And actually, what do, what do I think about that? Well, actually, if 75% of the population are non-playing characters, as some people are suggesting, well, then it's no point wasting my time and energy on that. Let me find the other 25% who are still playing the game, uh, but not even playing the game as we were given the rules to, but the original game, which is the game of life, the game of nature, the game of Mother Earth. And how do we create the system rather than receiving the system that was given to us and that we just agreed to? Right. So I think this is where the exciting thing is. And this is where we're going to talk about in the last 10 to 15 minutes is about how we can work with the medicines, how we can break down the illusions. You know, just want to share a little piece that uh, came to me the other day. I think it's from a guy called Dr. Arkis, who's uh, now saying that he believes the original, uh, let's say the original virus that was let loose, uh, which many of us are now calling a bioweapon, for example, he's saying that it was made up of snake venoms, two particular venoms, one including cobra venom and the other one I don't remember. But he says those two venoms are known for uh, eliminating sense of smell and sense of taste. But what he identified was that those venoms go straight to the back of the brain and attack, attack the nicotine receptors that we have, which is what turns off the sense of smell and the sense of taste. Now, interestingly, he said, and this is where the medicine piece comes in, that people who smoked tobacco during the last two to three years were the least affected by whatever this thing was that was let loose in the world. And I think that's super interesting because that totally concurs with my own experience when I was uh, doing my first healing on, on a person who'd received some of the medication. And I then went into the forest afterwards and had a very, very powerful experience that felt like I'd been poisoned. It felt like poison at the time. I didn't really understand what was going on. But you know what was the medicine that helped me, brother? It was the HAPE medicine. I managed to get home. I had a huge dose of the tobacco stuff and I managed to clear the energy, the energetic poison that was actually consuming my body at that point and making me feel very ill. And then within 10 minutes, it was gone. So, you know, again, I, I raised this question about what do we accept as a story? Is tobacco a killer that gives you cancer? Well, accordingly, in, in Europe, apparently it is. But if you're in the Americas and you've been in Central, North or South America, you will know that indigenous people say that tobacco is one of the mother plants, one of the greatest healers of all. So it is it a healer or a killer? Which okay. do you believe, right, bro? You know, so here's the thing about tobacco. I mean, I want to mention a few things because you already said a lot of things, but you put me in different places already in my mind, you know. So let me go. So, so there, bro, no, 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 no. Let's, let, let's go back for predictive for, for for programming for just a second, just to make yeah. a point, okay? Very valid, very current. And then we move to, to, to tobacco. Just what happened in Ohio in the last, what was it, two months? The, the, the trail, uh, the train derailment with chemicals, you know. All you have to do to understand predictive programming is go on Netflix and watch a movie called White Noise. That movie, in that movie, that was like published, I don't know, a few years ago, uh, you know, released. In that movie, a train with chemicals gets off the rail in Ohio. Exactly what's happening now. And the people in some of the residents of Ohio were actually playing in the characters in the film. I mean, can you imagine they're like the, the people like what? I mean, the filming game? No, that's real, man. The, the, the thing is real. So how do you explain this? I'll keep it for, to yourself. But that's the fact. Happened exactly what happened in the movie. Coincidence? You decide, okay? You decide. I, I just wanted to, to, to refer that. So moving towards, um, you know, the, the later thing, tobacco. Here's the thing. From my experience, I live in, in Peru in 14 years, you know, and I was a shaman class for like 17, 18 years, so, you know, 2005. And I met many indigenous people, my like teachers, and it's like, all of them work with mapache. We work with mapache ceremony. It's a pure tobacco leaf, you know. Uh, we don't inhale that. It's just it's a, it's a transformation. It's a process of transformation. Transformation with your intention. That's how it's meant to meet, you know, with the spiritual realm. But the thing is, like, I met people in their eighties, in their nineties, in their hundreds. I mean, all dudes. They all smoke mapache. No cancer. No problems. No nothing. And then I was thinking, like, okay, but back home, 
back then I was living in the West. But hey, that's not the case when people have cancer, mouth problems. And I kind of look into it. It's not a tobacco that kills you, man. It's a chemical that put into it that gives you flavor, that kind of addicts you, you know? It's like there is no addiction to mapacho. No, nothing. I use it ceremonially, and that's it, you know? It's like, but you are addicted to your mouth or whatever you, you smoke, you know? Because the chemicals in it, it's like you smoking chemical, of course you will get cancer. I mean, what, what do you expect? You know, it's like a, a two plus two, the like, dark, you smoke chemicals, you get cancer for sure. But if you smoke pure mapacho, that's not the case, you know? And which brings us back to same with coconut, same with other plants. It's the perversion of the plant that creates problems, not the original plants as they grow and as they've been used naturally. They are not a problem. Coca is absolutely sacred plant. We need, I mean, it, it, it's just a, a gift from Mother Nature. It helps people to work hard in the mountains without food, without water, without the heat, come home, be healthy, you know. Imagine, it's like without that, they wouldn't even survive. And there is no addiction. You cannot get addicted to coca. Impossible. Believe me, I try. Not possible. Not possible. It's physically, physiologically not possible. And yet, go go start, you know, with, with the white powder and see what happened to you. A whole different world because of perversion. It was a chemical uh, castration of the plant. You know, it's, it's, it's like, I, I speak about it in some of the books, you know. That's what happens. But the thing is, like, it's not that tobacco is the problem. Is the processed product, manufactured product that has chemicals in it? That is the problem. That is the problem. And it, it's funny you say that because we just recently uh, begin to offer best happens from Brazilian tribe to people. It's going to be an online uh, shaman shop. Nice. It's going online in, in a few days. So the people check with next week, they will have the ability to buy all kinds of different kinds, you know. Just sharing, you know, helping people to get medicine, legal medicine, in, in their hands and use it wisely for their, um, you know, benefit. You know. So what? What else was there? Was something else you spoke about? Like, uh, well, just the organized or... terrorism. But I just want to pick up a point there. Yeah, the okay. inversion of medicines, right, is also something that we've seen in the world. Whether it's synthetic uh, sacred fungi, whether it's the castration of the plants, like to, into, you know, like particularly coca into cocaine, whether it's tobacco. You, you can look at many plants, right? Iboga, they've made Iboga game or Ibogaine. And, and, and they want to put ayahuasca into a tablet. There are people within the psychedelic community who want to take this beautiful medicine and make a tablet out of it. I'm like, why? What, why do that? Ah, because you can patent that as a product to make money from it. Of course. Of Back course. to the same old gangster terrorism, it's right? And, and it comes up all over the place, not in the places you expect either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I walk in the field, man. It's like it's just like <laughs> it's a crazy idea. <laughs> crazy idea you know? yeah. But it, it's true. That that's what it is. That's what you're up against. Against powerful interests that only want profit and control. That's it. No spirit. No love, no compassion, no humanity, nothing. None of that. None of that is important to you and me and other like us. Nothing of that is important to them. These are psychopaths. We are against psycho. And when people start to understand that, they will wake up. They will make change in their life. But until they believe that this is people they see on TV, they the same people like them, like with the suits inside and you know, important and uh, speak with authority in voice and you know. These are, you know, these are psychopaths. You're talking psychopaths. And again, talking, talking about this, what is it, when I speak about psychopaths, what is the first image come to your mind? Something from Hollywood, maybe? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> a crazy guy, joker, walking on the street with the base, base, and hurting people. That's psychopath. Oh, yeah, but this guy on TV doesn't look like this guy. <laughs> right? <laughs> so he like can't be a psychopath. No, he's not, because... It's the same thing what I'm telling you. It's the same thing I was telling you about the Satan, talking about the religious uh, program. It's the same thing I was talking about. Uh, what was the other thing we talked about? It's the same thing about it. Like, uh, I forgot now. We were talking about this, like the appearance versus the reality. 
Ah, yeah. I mean, we're, we're living in a world where, where we're living in a simulation and everything is, is a pretend or it's a facade. And, and, you know, you're absolutely right. You know, a, a psychopath does not look like the Joker. Because uh, if you put that dude in, in the House of Parliament or in Congress, people go, oh, this guy's this guy's a nutter. So instead, we have other people who look normal, yeah, but are actually yeah. much more crazy, much more dangerous. Right? I mean, I'm a releasing variants to scare people into compliance. Like this right. Ben Hanger guy, are you kidding me? He was the Minister of Health in Britain? He was the Minister of Health. And this, I mean, okay, yeah. he, he was, I mean, he, just to put something else into the illusion mix, right, just on this point, is that some of the people in, in Britain, the ministers, were forced to resign over, to be honest, what were quite inconsequential things. Okay, he was caught uh, having a snog with his secretary in the lift. Okay, not a great thing to do. His wife was probably deeply pissed off. It's, you know, it's wrong. But, but it's considering, it's considering what the guy has done, Deploying variants is like wow, they're still focusing on the fact to that he was force compliance, right? To enforce, I mean, what, are you kidding me? So let, let's, I mean, this is like this is bioterrorism in, in its purest, purest form by definition. By definition, they are in control. And, and here's the other thing. These people lie, right, Sergey? So, so this guy went on TV on a very well-known TV show called I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here, told everybody he was going to give the money to charity. Then it turns out that he actually kept 320000 out of 330 for himself, despite the fact he told everybody he wasn't doing it for the money. He then got caught out on a TV show by a good uh, daytime presenter, a guy called Richard Maidley. He said, um, I want to ask you about this. Where is that 320 grand? Oh, but I gave 10 grand to charity. Yeah, but you said you were going to give all of it. So what I'm saying is that these guys consistently oh, lie over and over and over again. Mr. Johnson lies, Mr. Hancock lies, they all lie. And yet, People still literally line up to to receive stuff from these guys because they said that it's what they need to do. I'm just like, but these guys are proven liars. Why would you believe oh, anything they say? We're living in this in the zombie land. <laughs> right, exactly. Living in this zombie, zombie land. land. This is why people do this. Mm -hmm. These are zombies that look like us. You know, it's like if you see the fraud and you still buy into it. I mean, it's like, man, it's on you. Right, it, exactly. It's on you, brother. And I think that's where we're leading to in this conversation as we come into the, the final five minutes is how do we, uh, the people that see, the people that have their eyes open, what do we do? Because obviously, like you say, we can't go toe to toe with nuclear countries. So how do we bring it back to ourselves? Right? This is what I want you to share in the last five minutes from a Watuma perspective. How do we start to step away from the matrix? How do we regain our sovereignty? And how do we stop buying into the BS? That's the same message that you find in each of my books. Just brought that was, that was a up right for you. <laughs> just brought it in a visual way. Nature. Go to nature. Spend time in nature. In peace. No stimulation. Leave your phone at home. Don't use nothing. Just be in nature. Be present. You know, listen to your breath. See, listen to the birds. Just be there. Just be. Find that peace in your mind. You need to calm down. You need to relax into vibration of nature. So you can start here. You, you can begin hearing a different voice. And this is another voice that's in your head. So people say, oh, this is schizophrenic. Like, no, 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 no. I'm not that. It's, it's, it's the voice of your heart. It's the voice of your reason you begin to hear. You cannot hear those voices when you are being bombarded with fear. Fear is the poison that they use to deactivate your ability to think for yourself. That poison is non-existent in nature. You go there and there is no poison. So your mind can calm down, your nervous system calm down, and you start hearing your mind and your heart, you know, and that's the way. That's the way to self-healing. And of course, plant medicine. That's that that. You know, the catalyst, that's like the, the magnifier. It just makes it all more powerful, more fast, and, you know, more deep. So nature, plant medicine, and and your own your own ability to think. Just think for yourself. Learn to think for yourself. Critical thinking. Don't just believe what you hear. Research, put it to test, you know, contemplate things, and find your own answer. That's it. That, that's my only answer. I don't have more answers. That's the answer I use. 
And that's the answer I share with people who come to visit us. Nature, medicine, silence, contemplation, healing, well-being, peace. That's the medicine. That's what makes the difference. So that's my message, same message. I have the same message. And, and if we're talking 20 years, it will be the same message again. This message might, will be the same. It, I, I might understand deeper things, of course, as we grow or we grow, but the message will not change. Right, you know, and I uh, hope, brother, exactly, you know, I knew you were going to say that because I would say exactly the same thing. But, you know, if we're looking uh, at the world we live in, right, we have so much illusion coming at us, particularly out of these things, particularly out of the mobile phone. And so it becomes difficult sometimes to discern the truth. But if I go and sit underneath a tree with my back against it, I know that that tree is there. I can feel it. I can also hear the birds singing in the trees. I can hear the wind blowing through the trees. These are all things that I know as much as anything can be real, must be real because I'm observing them, I'm participating in the experience with them. When I look into the telephone, I'm going into another um, metaverse. I don't know what's real, what's not. Is Mr. Putin really Mr. Putin? Does he have five bodyguards wandering around? Is Mr. Biden a robot? Probably, maybe, who the hell knows? Do I even really care anymore, right? Because it's not my world. It's, it's something going on on a screen that's coming to me. When I go and sit in the garden, it's like, no, the animals running around me are real. I have monkeys that live here in the trees. I have a cat that comes and sits with me, follows me around the garden. We exchange, you know, energies and company and time together. These things are real. And they actually just bring me back into my heart and make life simple, right? And, you know, you were saw, uh, talking about the plant medicines and there are medicines that can help clear our minds because it can get a little foggy up here with all of the crap coming at us. And, you know, it can, can we see through our third eye? Can we see through the illusions? This is where the plants are also here to help us. Plants like wormwood, for example, or cocoa or, or watrum, they all help open the heart, they help open the third eye. And what they give us is the ability to discern so that we can make better choices. Am I gonna choose a fractal, organic, natural option? Or am I gonna choose something that's perhaps more inorganic? more technology based because that's the choice that humanity has right now and everybody has a choice it's not for us to, to say right sergey you shouldn't have ai you shouldn't be transhuman that's not my place to say that that's up to somebody to decide me personally it's not for me wow. but you know this is where we're at right now and so i think today's discussion has been a nice way of sort of picking apart a few of the things going on in the world that are obviously bothering us both but also again re-emphasizing that people have choices right yes we do have a choice and that's what the medicine actually teaching you that's like right in your face. That's like first thing, you know, if you're open enough and sensitive, you know, and you just have the experience and it's like, I have a choice. I can choose to be sick or I can choose to be healthy. It's like I hear it from people. Like I hear the people report it back all the time. And it's my experience too, you know, that's how it starts for me. But yes, you have a choice. You have a choice to go back home and just live your life as you were before sick and miserable, or you change things right here, right now. It's a choice you make in the moment that that, that starts things, that starts, that gives you energy, that, that, that change things. You know, if is the of recognizing that you have a choice and then making the choice. It's like a two part event, you know, and I decide not to be afraid and I decide to live in love, not in fear. Period. And there is no force in the world that can change that. It's just not possible. Exactly. You know, this is a decision that I make in my own head, in my own heart. It's between me and me, me and my spirit. Who who can get there? It's a sacred, protected sign. You know, right. and in also just, just to say what you know, like to emphasize the point uh, that you just made. We are a sacred vessel. Each and every one of us is a sacred vessel filled with sacred water. And is the home to many millions of beings. It's not just David or Sergi in here. There's a whole bunch of other beings in running my heart, my liver, my kidneys, and you know, in Chinese medicine, each one of these has a recognized spirit. So in the end, I'm like, whoa, I have a responsibility not just to David and whatever David is exactly, but all of the other beings that I share this space with. I need to make my vessel as strong and healthy as I can. And if I keep accepting the bullshit medicine, I'm going to get sick. If I go back to nature and take the natural medicine, I'm going to get healthy. Not only am I going to get healthy, I'm going to get smart. I'm going to see through the BS. I'm going to go, you know what? I don't want to participate in that anymore. I want to do something that makes me feel good. And I want to hang around with people that also feel good, right? Bro, think about this. What, what, this is the question. What a sheep would do on, the, on its way to slaughterhouse if suddenly it would become self-aware? 
I mean, it's like a no-brainer, man, to run away. It's like, whoa, I'm not going there. It's it's self-awareness. It's also for self-awareness. It's not a privilege of the few. It's the necessity of the many in this world. It's not, you know, 20 years ago, we were like spiritual seekers. You know, we were looking for self-awareness and awakening of the you know, spiritual awakening. And that was like, oh, that's that spiritual stuff. That's like, you know, it's like, man, you don't have this. You're going to die. That's it. You're not going to make the next few years because what, what they plan for us is not good. It's not spiritual, that's for sure. <laughs> what well, you know, what the the plan is not good. You're not going to be self-aware. You're not taking your life in your hand. You're not going to make it. Period, man. This is not about I'm reaching spiritual enlightenment because I don't know I want to be a guru or cool, whatever. It's like, hey, you don't do that. You're not going to be around for too long. Period. This is like we live in different worlds. You know that's that's pretty much my message. Uh, you know, to spiritual thinkers. It's like, it's good, spiritual thinking is good, but the cost has to be updated. It's like, why are you spiritual? What, what, what is it that you, why are you seeking wisdom? Well, you know, you know and, be... and, and build a, a new humanity, you know? Exactly. And, and exactly. carry humanity inside. We don't want humanity to consist of psychopaths like we have now. We want a better humanity, people who, who put moral principles in front of profit. That's the humanity I want to see. You right, know? exactly. You know, and uh, as we come to the end of today's show, I just want to remind you of something I think you said in the very first Wack Dreaming sessions we did, which, you know, in the past spiritual, uh, the spiritual seeking was, was uh, how to say, a possibility or an option. Pretty now well. it's, it's an essential activity, and I think that's... Yeah. The necessity, that's exactly what you like, we, The world has been pushed to, towards spirituality. Right. That's what it's like. You know, it's like, oh, you become spiritual, or you die. That's it. There is no more. Well, so, you know? As a final thought for today, I just want to put it to our audience because it came up in another podcast I was doing with a part of my community the other day. And it's like everything is spiritual. You know, in the past, people do spirituality on the weekend when they go to a retreat or they do a seminar. Then they go back to work on Monday to Friday and spirituality stops. And then again on Saturday morning, they go to a retreat, they do another one and spirituality kicks in again. And it's like, you know, there's a famous Buddhist uh, phrase which goes something like before enlightenment, Chop wood, carry water. After enlightenment, Absolutely. chop wood, carry water. Nothing changed. Nothing changed, That's the whole Nothing changed right? Yeah. I always love this Zen uh, story. It's like th that's exactly what you understand. You do the same thing exactly as before, but differently. Right. <laughs> that's it. You know, it, being spiritual, it's not it's not believing in, in a dogma of some kind. It's just being in spirit, being connected to your life, to the world. Be present, be aware of your existence happening at moment to moment. Right. You know, it's, 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 it's the perception, it's the connection and perception. You know, it's not going to church or going to India to 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 you know to listen to Baba G or whatever. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean that, that that can help somewhere in the beginning, you know, but it's not where you want to end up after 20 years. You know, it's not a good uh, uh, you know feedback. Right. <laughs> you know, it's still doing that. You know what I mean? But being spiritual, just being being humane, being human, being connected, being compassionate, being empathic, being aware. That's it. You know, sitting by the tree and listening to the bird, that's being spiritual. Taking your dog out, that's being spiritual. You know, uh, feeding animals on the tree, that's being, being spiritual. Feeding you know? yourself, even giving yourself good food, that's exactly. spiritual. You know, and yes, exactly. This... You know, taking care of yourself. Right. Take care of your shrine or your body to take it shrine. You know, this is true. in fact, what could be more spiritual by than looking after yourself? I mean, if you understand that you are a sacred vessel in Buddhism, it's called a, a precious human rebirth. There are many beings that want to be having a human life, and we're the blessed ones. It's so incredible. let's make the most of it, right? That's what you understand when you wake up. <laughs> when you wake up, you understand, oh my god, I'm I'm that which I was thinking. Right? It's like <laughs> what? But no, it can't be that. I was thinking a, a guy in the sky. Right, with a beard and everything else. Yeah, yeah. It's like, well, he's not there. You know, first of all, he's not there. But second, whoever that is that you were thinking, it's actually in you. And that's where the real awakening is. It's the inward process. You understand that you are that. You are that physical consciousness. You are that 
you know, creatures that have the capacity to be, while being mortal, to understand immortality, while being limited in space, to understand infinity, you know, by being small in size, to comprehend the vastness of the universe, you know, it's like, we have that ability that we have to use. Instead, we're being deactivated by fear, by propaganda. We're being deactivated. Our brains are being just shut down and brought to a very narrow um, um, focus. Yeah, it's like a very narrow um, attention kind of corridor. It's, it's just like, oh, survival. That's it. It's right here. Take the shot. You know, take do. It's not you die. It's like, it's very, we are huge. So what happens when you take one tumor? It just breaks through this. It's just like a tsunami coming. Your damage is broken. It's just like, and it's like all gone. And you're like, oh my God, I'm in space. I'm like, I'm, I'm a, you know, connected with the whole universe. It's like, man, Dr. Paul, she cannot scare me, man. You know, it's like, you're beyond all this. You know, this is the power of the medicine. It just, mm -hmm. it just dissolves boundaries. It just breaks them. It just eradicate fear. Makes illusions and spells. Feel free, free and connected and happy and joyful. And when you're in that state of being, you're not scared. There is no fear there. You're powerful and uncontrollable. That's what it is, you know? So my wish for people is to do just that. Mm -hmm. Go to nature. Booyaka, bro. Booyaka, that's what we say here. You know? How do you say that? Booyaka. Booyaka. <laughs> what, what kind of I may, I may or something? It's something like that. It's like, yeah, I hear you, man. Back at you. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Keep it real. Or something like that. It's an old phrase actually from Britain from a, a character called Ali G. Booyaka. And it's like, yeah, man, I hear you. Booyaka. So anyway, yeah. look, finishing on a booyaka note. Um, it's been a great chat today, bro. We've gone a little bit over, but I think the conversation has been super interesting, bringing it back to the things that we love, back to the medicines, back to the plants, back to nature. So if people want to have an experience uh, with the Wachuma cactus and they feel like they want to head down to Peru, where can they find out more about your work, bro? What's the website? My website, wachumawati.com. Mm -hmm. And same with Instagram, wachuma. Watch it at Instagram, and maybe you could put it in the you know, so yeah, I'll put it in the show notes. Yeah, and, and if, if I can just for a second, just again, plug my book. Sure. I really want people to read this book, guys. I mean, this is important. I wrote four books, they're all good, they're all interesting, all important, all kind of talking about similar things. But this book will change your life and save your life. I mean. This is the one. Mr. Turtle, bro, just hold it a bit closer to the camera. We can't quite oh. see it. There we go. So it's Dancing in Hell with Eyes Wide Open, How to Survive the New World Order. So pretty much everything that me and the bro have been talking about today, but I know there's a lot more juice in there. And for sure, you can get that and all of the other great books that Sergey's written on his website. And I'm looking forward to the shop opening, bro. I'll be one of your first customers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's coming next week. Beautiful, beautiful. Actually, cool. this book is on Amazon. The other is on my website. So just read it and wake up. Share it with people. Everything is there, man. 20, 225 links for you to research. You get the link, but buy on, on Kindle because on Kindle there's hyperlink. You click on this, boom, it's there. If you do it like this, it will be hard for you to verify everything I say. So just for your own good to, to help you. I've done the hard work. Just take that. Cool. Okay. All right. Well, look, thank you again for another wonderful uh, chat here, uh, Sergi, on the Wachuma sessions. Uh, hopefully it won't be uh, so long until we do the next show. And for sure, by the time we next chat, maybe in a month or so, the world will probably have changed a lot more and hopefully won't be quite so crazy, but could actually be a lot more crazy. So we don't know. We're just going to keep taking our medicine, sitting under trees, talking to birds and okay. generally feeling good about our life, right? Which is what I guess we're trying to encourage everybody else yeah. to do. Get yeah. back to nature. Remember that you are part of nature and stop right. listening to the BS. Exactly. Good message to wrap it up. Thank you, bro. Thank you, everybody, for listening. We'll see you all again next time. And uh, take it easy. Ciao for now. All right.